the Les Paul Supreme is finally back. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. That's right, we're finally checking out the new 2023 Les Paul Supreme. Let's see if we're shocked or disappointed. So far, that's looking really nice. So these were leaked a couple of months ago and we talked about them on the show, but I'm a big fan of the Les Paul Supreme, but it's mainly because they took them out of production and they kind of had a mysterious disappearance with the 125th anniversary run. So to start things off here, let's do a history segment. The Les Paul Supreme was first introduced January of 2003. They were incredibly fancy guitars for Gibson USA production level. They were the highest dollar Les Paul before you got into the custom shop. That's always been the Supreme's claim to fame. But they finally brought the model back in a completely new version. What used to make a Supreme a Supreme was the fact that you had a carved maple back on them. And they were a little bit thicker than a regular Les Paul, and they were chambered out, they were really cool. Typically they had fancy inlays, but this one had a figured ebony fretboard because it was a Guitar of the Week limited edition. And of course the original Supremes had the awesome globe mother of pearl brass abalone inlay. So in many ways, this new Supreme is only Supreme in its name. They wanted to use an existing franchise, essentially, you could say, to give a new model street cred because they changed a lot. They still left them with really fancy tops. They left them with their gold hardware. They gave us the Super 400 inlays done up in real mother of pearl on the ebony fretboard, but they did change our headstock up by bringing something out of the vault. So this headstock design was apparently in the Gibson archives from the 1940s. But a lot of people were quick to point out that one of ESP's brands uses something kind of similar. So I could make this whole review about how it's not as good as the original Supremes, it's vastly different, but it's more helpful to compare this to the Les Paul Modern. Their specs are nearly identical, except for now we have new finishes that are translucent that have flame tops. At introduction, we've got the translucent ebony burst, the dark wine red, and fire burst. There's also a straight black one, but he's a little bit different. We'll have to document that one in another episode. The LP Modern had Mother of Pearl trapezoid inlays. This one's got the Mother of Pearl Super 400. We've got the new emblem we were talking about. We have the introduction of binding around the headstock to make it fancier, the gold hardware, the locking tuners have stayed the same. They have the same ultra modern weight relief. The pickups are the exact same in this guitar as it is the Modern. You've got all the fancy push pulls on your electronics too. And on the back, we have our Gibson USA Comfort Swoop, I guess you could say. It's not the full-on access heel carve, but it gets it out of your way a little bit more. So a Les Paul Modern is $3,000 brand new. These guys are $4,000. So you're essentially paying $1,000 more to get a fancy flame top finish and some binding on one of the Les Paul Moderns. In many ways, I'm glad these came out because the Les Paul Modern doesn't seem to catch a lot of people's attention, but tying it into the old Supreme branding has gotten some people very excited about these. So first impressions picking this thing up, it really does just feel like something brand new all on its own, and I dig it. It's very fancy. I feel the fretboard edges are really rounded on this model. I like that. And this top surely isn't anything to sneeze at. And at the price, it comes in a Gibson standard hard shell case. Just says Gibson on the outside. It's got a nice black Tolex exterior with the more rectangular latches inside your compartment. We get a Gibson strap, silica packet, case keys. Pre-pack checklist, baby photo. Not all these are going to get it. Gibson has officially discontinued the baby photo. So late 2023 is apparently when they are ditching this. So if you've got one, you have one of the earlier ones. If you're missing it, sorry, they're not doing them anymore. But hey, this is cool. A blank truss rod cover if you prefer that. And you've got a poker chip in here. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't even notice it was gone. <laughs> you've also got the Gibson multi-tool, owner's manual, polishing cloth. Now this is pretty nice. They actually give you a Les Paul custom pick guard with it if you choose to install it. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs before we get to that playing sample. All right, inside the new Supreme, let's go ahead and check out these pickups starting with our neck. We've got the Rhythm Pro model and then the bridge is the Lead Pro Plus. As we were talking about earlier, that's the same thing you find in the Les Paul Modern. So if you tried one of those and you liked the tones and you just wanted it to be more beautiful, that's exactly what the modern Supremes are doing. So bridge pickup reads 8.4k ohms, our neck position a little less at 7.65, and our middle position is at 4. Remember, you also have additional tonal opportunity. 
The spec sheet calls it a tap. We're just reducing some of the windings in the coils, not necessarily just running one. And then this is your direct bridge, so it takes everything else out of the circuit. So you can tell that affects your reading just a little bit. That's also beneficial because say you're on your neck pickup, but you need to switch over to a blistering lead tone and you have your volumes and your tones set up the way you like. This allows you just to pull that up and then you go instantly to a wide open bridge pickup. And then this one is for out of phase in the middle position only. It gives you those Peter Green quacky tones. So technically, you could see that as superior to the original Supremes. You do have more tonal opportunities out of these things. The neck pickup cavity is labeled E2, likely standing for the type of ebony burst, and then LPSU for a Les Paul Supreme with the double zero. That's kind of cool how you can see the bare maple top with the mahogany wood grain. So original Supremes were chambered. These have the ultra modern weight relief, which again is the exact same thing in the Les Paul Modern, but that's the one that has the V shape and then a few other cavities around it. They also use a wider channel route. So if these areas look a little bit different, it's because of that. It uses our lightweight aluminum bridge. It's also done up in gold. API branded, has the hex key adjustment for our thumb posts if you prefer to use that. Same thing is true on our tailpiece, lightweight aluminum API. This is a perfect one for our spooky season. I just love this ebony burst finish. It's looking so good. The other two main production colors, you have the black back and neck, but the dark wine red, you can see through it. And occasionally you can get figured mahogany on them. A viewer of the show actually sent me a photo of this gorgeous one. That was definitely a uh, luck of the draw. This top is quite excellent. However, I think for my own personal collection, I do want one of these, but I'm gonna watch these over the next year or so to see if I can find a top that just makes you go, whoa, I've never seen one like that before. This is absolutely excellent if you're just looking for a nice wide flame. And honestly, the fact that this one has the baby photo and only really early ones have it makes me think I might regret this one day, but <laughs> whatever. We can take a second to appreciate our true Mother of Pearl Super 400 inlays. That takes a little bit more time to inlay because it's not just one big block. They don't just put black stripes in it. Those are separate inlays. So that's looking pretty nice for a Gibson USA. As far as tooling marks go, on this particular example, it's not too bad on the front of the board. However, on the treble side, I'm noticing like a lot of black smudges and tooling marks like actually in the binding. It looks like maybe I was there before they put the finish on. They're pretty minor, but you know, again, if you look at it with a fine tooth comb, you start to notice stuff. And here's a small thing where the black finish bled into where the nut is. We've got a compound radius ebony fretboard. Usually that means you start around 10 and you get to about 14-ish. I'm not exactly sure what Gibson's doing on this one. Looks like it might be like a 10 to 14 though. And we have our usual 24 3 quarter inch scale, but our nut measure is about 1.7 inches. That increases to 2.08. First fret neck depth 0.85 and 0.93 by the 12th. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. This neck profile is slim, but yet it's still rounded. It feels quite comfortable. And here's a look at our new emblem. Honestly, I wasn't that big of a fan when I first saw it, but it kind of grows on you. Like this whole model just feels like something brand new. So whether or not we'll see more of this in the custom shop or whatnot, I guess time will tell. But I guess here's the thing. The reason why we've never had a custom shop Les Paul Supreme before is because their bodies were very unique. Like you could try to commission made to measure custom shop Supremes and they'd just turn you down and say, nah, we don't do the Supreme body. They could make a custom shop version of and give it the real access heel. So I wonder if after these have been out for like a year or so, we might see that. I know Neil Sean has a couple of these that he's been playing, so maybe it'll just end up being a signature model for him. But look at that. We actually have a truss rod cover that reads Les Paul Supreme. We don't have our brass one that we're used to. And now we move on to the back. It's a black finish. It's gonna show fingerprints, smudges. This is just a dust magnet. Everything sticks to the new nitro finish. So that's why I brought up that wine red one. If you're still trying to decide what color you like best, maybe it would be better not to get the straight up ebony finish. I'm not sure if this is exactly showing up in the camera, but you can actually see that this one probably has that ribbon mahogany flame that I was talking about earlier. It's just covered over in black because you can kind of see some dips in the finish. But in reality, that's just it kind of sinking into the wood grain. However, over here, I do see a slightly deeper dip. That's not a ding. That's just, you know, not a completely flush level surface before it got painted. However, there are a couple dings right there. So maybe somebody took it for a test run before I got this one out of the dealer shop. Here's another area where the wood didn't get completely sanded down flush. This one stands out proud. Then I notice a small ding right here. 
In case you didn't realize, fancy electronics means you're going to have a PCB if you're getting it out of Gibson USA. That means you're on a Quick Connect system, so you can put whatever white Quick Connect pickups you want in these. So if you don't like these pickups, real easy to swap out. You can 100% do it yourself. And if there's something wrong, it's easy for Gibson to send you out one. And here's our toggle switch cavity route just for fun. You've got your output jack over here. Really obnoxiously large strap buttons. Gibson's been using this style since about 2014 on select models. But for some reason with this heel carve, everything else being black and the gold, it really pops. So the difference between this and an access heel carve is the access is completely flush with the heel of the neck. It is all one uniform thing. This still has a little bit of a shelf. It's better than nothing, but it is not the same as a custom shop access heel joint. If you think you have the best that Gibson can offer, no, <laughs> you gotta pay about twice as much in the custom shop to get the best of the best. That's not what I want you to take away. I just want you to be aware of all the different iterations that are out there. It can be confusing when you first start to get into these things. We do have locking gold Grover tuners, made in USA stamp, and then our serial number dating it to 2023. All said and done though, nice weight, eight and a half pounds, eight pounds, 7.9 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. <laughs> gives you an idea of what you can do with the clean tones. And again, direct bridge. Not a big difference between that clean, but you'll see a little bit more of a boost when you get to the dirty. I do find in my room with the fluorescent lights that the PCB seems to be just a little bit louder than regular pots. I don't think you'd really notice that in most situations. I think the tones sound pretty good. That definitely does not sound like a full coil split, so I don't think they're incorrect in advertising it as a coil tap. It still has a nice roundedness to it. difference in the room. Having everything else in the circuit gives a nice roundedness to it. <laughs> how it just has a little bit more bite to it.
Now that we know all about the new Gibson Les Paul Supreme, what are my final thoughts? Definitely nothing like the regular Supremes, but honestly, that could be a good thing for some people because original Supremes, they are quite big bodied. This one is a little bit more streamlined, especially with your comfort cut. If you go into one of these thinking it's a Les Paul Modern, but super beefed up and you're paying about a thousand dollar premium to have some cosmetic appointments and a flame top to make it more beautiful, I think you're going to be in the right mindset to enjoy this. Personally, I'm not a big fan of fiddling around with controls, but in a recording situation, I could see how that'd be fantastic. There definitely is a very slight different tone to this, and I don't know if it comes down to the PCB or if that's just a placebo effect. I really think they just brought back the Supreme term. That way they could use a name that has recognition to put it on a brand new model to help give it that first push that it needs to be accepted. So ultimately, I'm glad the Supreme is back because maybe now we could see either the custom shop version of it or maybe we could see the original Supremes come back one day. All right, Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed. If you're interested in being the next owner of this one, you can find my demo model on my website, troglysguitarshow.com. And if not, we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.